Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan, and I'm your host. Joining me today, very special guest coming here all the way from another neighborhood in Phoenix, Arizona, Abrar Maniar. Wow, this, this, this is a breach of contract. You know, Stefan said specifically he's not going to roll the R's. But he did that and he like, you know, he like drove it in like, he, you know, he brought it home a little stronger than even I would have thought. I did hammer it in. But on the last one, I went full on Southern American and I went, Mani, mm. I held it. Yeah. yeah, I held you in suspense. And then I went redneck. So I, I thought it would give it a nice balance, yeah. a nice a garnish. Element. Yeah, yeah. That, that does make sense. I'm, I'm a very special guest for sure. Sometimes uh, described as special needs guest, but uh, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy you're here. And by the way, your name is thank your parents because to me, it sounds incredibly intimidating and badass. Because if you just break it down, you've got Abrar, which fuck, you've got a rar in your name. It's like, Rrr, like a lion. So I, I'm a little intimidated by that. You've got a manly noise in there. Then Maniar, you've got man. So it's like, hey, I'm a roaring man. And then you even have Yar to top it off, which I think is pirate speed. Pirate, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. So maybe I should have been used like that. A brad money Yar. So. Oh, man. I, I, I wish uh, when, when I got picked on in school, people like focused on the roar and the manliness of my name and not the bra that you can spell out with the, the, the middle three <laughs> letters <laughs> from my name. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you know what? I'm here. I love to shower my guests and my friends, which we might be forming a beautiful scintillating friendship, but I'm building you up. You, you know what you've got? We talked about it pre-show, the beautiful glowing skin, wonderful complexion, full head of hair and beautifully trimmed beard. I think- I've, I've, Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. But I, I, I've, I've told, uh, spoken to you about this previously uh, offline that, this whole hair, it's a facade, you know, it's, it's going away. This is my yeah. last hurrah. I, I have like a year left with my hairline. So I'm just like having fun with it right now. I don't have the long locks that you do and we can keep blowing each other a little more here, but uh, I'm just saying like, this, this is not good. This is not happening, dude. Mm. I'm just like, you know, I've just made my peace with it because it's all about expectation. Like, you know, if you, if you, you have everything that you don't want. Like, that's a very nice saying that, that I've heard. I know you do robot sayings, but this is a human saying. You, you already have everything that you don't want. So if you don't want something, it's as good as you already have it. Like, that, wow. Fuck, man. You're already getting deep. I love this. This is an <laughs> advice podcast. You'll, you already have everything you don't want. But one thing you do want that you do have is your podcast, Abrar Talks yes, to sir. People, which yeah. is, I've, I've listened to a couple episodes, Patrick Aiken, Luis Alvarez, and one more that I can't remember, but they are captivating. You're, we were just talking as well about the art of conversation and Maestro, you are a Da Vinci with the conversation because the way that it flows, I think I feel like usually it starts off with this nice little back and forth and, yeah. and then you go roll in the deep and then I'm hearing things of travels in South Asia and people holding Glocks, getting shot. <laughs> so what I, I wanted to ask, I mean, you've got the podcast. You're also and up and coming, like you're, you're creme de la creme in Phoenix. I mean, your, your creme is floating to the top amongst yeah. all these other cremes. I'm, I'm a floaty and, blob of fat. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, <laughs> and a delicious floaty blob of fat you are because you're winning awards. I see your name on all these posters and you're, you're just hitting that top. So I wanted to ask yeah. first with the comedy, when did you get stung? by the the bug of comedy and start to swell with desire for yeah. telling jokes yeah yeah for sure man so i think it was almost like a two two uh two step uh process almost where initially i i've, I've always been a big fan of comedy there wasn't a big stand-up comedy culture so to say in india but it, right. it picked up around 2007 2008 is when stand-up comedy started happening and mm -hmm. and then that's like how I got introduced to American stand-up, which is weirdly enough, like I saw an Indian stand-up, which was just starting out. And 
then got introduced to uh, American stand up and I really got into it. And Interesting. I was just a who, fan of comedy for this time, right? And who was yeah. who was oh sorry, I was just going to ask who was the first American comedian that you saw? Oh man, I mean uh, does a Canadian count? <laughs> It's, we'll count uh, it. Russell was it Russell Peters? Peters? Obviously, OG. Nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, Russell Peters. He's he's the world's biggest comedian, essentially. Like who he, he, I think if you want to like count on one guy to sell out the most number of tickets in the world, I think you, you gotta like you gotta bring Russell Peters to the to the uh, what do you call it to the plate. See, I'm trying to make oh, American yeah. sports references. Oh, that's right. beautiful. Yeah, you've got to build so, him around uh, yeah, the so backboard. It was, yeah, yeah. So I got uh, Russell Peters. I got into him, and then like that's a slippery slope. It's a good kind of a slippery slope when you're like listening to one comedian, you find this other guy. Before you know it, you're listening to podcasts by all these comedians. So I really got into Bill Burr, and and the his style really resonated with me. He's got that that frustrated about the little things, and he's not making joke jokes about little things like a uh, Seinfeld would. But he's like coming at the little things from a very existential angle. That's almost how I see it. Like he's, he's looking at something very pathetic about filling out a form at a bank and he doesn't like it. He takes that and he like almost relates it to his entire existence and at the, the entire of humanity's existence. And he says 80% of the people have to be, you know, have to be done away with for this world to be a good place again. Like he, so he's like a master of exaggeration, a master of analogies. So I, I really relate to that. And that's partially also because like growing up in India, the, the culture of ball breaking, ball busting, very similar to how uh, I've heard people describe the New England, Massachusetts, uh, you know, uh, Boston sort of a ball breaking. People will jump uh, to, to start having a fist fight before you know it, you know, if, like people are talking, they're talking shit. It's all good, right? You're basically roasting each other. You know, you don't call it roasting, but you're talking shit. And and yeah. people will like be ready to fight too. So like the stakes are really high. So that's like almost how I grew up. My dad's really funny, uh, you know, sometimes really cruelly funny, but he like, he makes jokes at the expense of other people. I get that a little bit. So <laughs> all of those comedy elements were with me. And when I started, started I, I moved to the US, I went to grad school, uh, you know, I got my degree, I got a decent job and had everything, you know, I, I, I married my girlfriend of, you know, a decade, you know, she's been my girlfriend since high school. We got married and everything looked very stable and I was very happy about it, right? Everything's, you know, uh, kumbaya, everything's great. Now, from there, I was like, okay, I got to do something else. I can't just be the guy. And it's a little pathetic if you think about it. It's a little quarter life crisis -y type of a, a thing. And it's a little pathetic, but I felt like I got to do something, man. And I always knew I had this funny thing in me. If I'm within a group of friends, I'm making everybody laugh. And I'm also like a big fan of comedy. So it just made sense for me to go and try it. And, and because I'm a, and I stick out here basically because I'm different. I speak different. I think differently from other people who've had a background growing up here in the US. Because of all these factors, I think I, I did relatively okay when I went up on stage. The first joke I did, you know, funnily enough, got a, uh, an applause break and that shit got to my head real fast and like damn hey, this this is nothing i'm gonna be selling out madison square garden in no time like uh, i didn't exactly think that but like that diluted my image of the art but then when i you know started doing it more and more regularly that's where reality kicked in but it's a lot of work i'm doing it i enjoy the process and that's how like i i try it's a cliche but I really want to think and I'm making a conscious effort to think about everything in terms of enjoying the process, enjoying what you're doing while you're doing it. There's nothing waiting in the future. There's nothing waiting for me tomorrow. I may get, if I get a you know, weekend at a club or hosting for someone, I'll be happy for a day or two. But after that, it's the baseline's reset. Now I'm going back and like, you know, looking for the next big thing, which is not bad per se, but I'm just trying to like, if I'm up on stage, I'm having the best time I can have up on stage. If I'm writing, I'm doing the same podcasting, the same thing. And I'm talking to uh, Steph Satani right now and I'm, in, I'm having the time of my life. So, so that's the kind of philosophy I'm going with, both podcast and comedy. But that's a long-winded answer for you right there. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut out a lot of that because that was Yeah, a lot. just no, like I'm... shrink it down <laughs> to like a 10-second <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> We're going to have to, yeah, we're going to have to get it for a reel on Instagram, but no, that was awesome. And I was just going to say, I think you just also introduced two of my favorite quotes. I mean, one from with your methodology, one from Jeff Bezos, it's almost like start every day as if it's your day one. 
And so it's just like, whatever happened yesterday, today is a new day, starting fresh, gonna hit it, hit it. Like it's day one and then Drake YOLO. You never, yeah. you only live once. <laughs> My grandma said the same thing, but I think it's fascinating what you've been doing so far and shit, an applause break after your first joke ever. What was the, yeah. can I ask what was the yeah, joke? Of course, of course. I don't even do that joke anymore because that had uh, you know, that oh, was a little bit of a yeah, gimmicky yeah, joke. Beneath me. Oh, wait, what was it? No, 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 not beneath me. I just, I can't do it. And it, it relates to something you were talking about earlier, my hairline. So it, uh, it has to do with that. So I, I had long hair uh, when I started out. I mean, it's probably as long as yours, not, not uh, as golden and flowy, but I had longer hair you know, I mean, all the way up till here. So yeah, there that. you go. So yeah, so I, was, I parted it right down the middle. I had like a longer beard too. And uh, that's, that is probably also a part of the quarter life crisis, the pathetic quarter life crisis, if I may, that I was speaking about. So I went up on stage, I thought of this joke, I'd written all my little jokes down on, uh, on a piece of paper. Uh, so the joke was, this is what Jesus would, would have looked like if he was not so white and blonde. And, <laughs> and everybody like, kind of like went into applause break because it was one of those poetry crowds, one of those supportive crowds, the, the ones with the, the clicks. Oh, where they snap the fingers. Yeah, the snappers. Yeah, like it was, it was one of those crowds, super supportive. So it's like almost uh, bowling with the guardrails on when you go up on those stages because they already give you so much, uh, so much leeway and, and goodwill when you go up. So that was a joke. And I, that was just like a commentary on like, Jesus was not actually white. He probably looked closer to how I did than Stefan did, but everybody right. thinks it's him. So it's kind of uh, that, that whole, that whole commentary. Yeah. That's awesome. And Jesus was probably by your side helping bring that laughter. So I think that over <laughs> yeah, it's like, it was like Muhammad who was, who was giving him, passing him the ball and like Jesus alley -ooping it. Like in <laughs> Look at you with the sports references. This is fantastic. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh. live and you learn because of, because with, with Americans, man, like especially guys, yeah, you got to bring up sports and, uh, I'm a big sports guy, but like none of the American sports, like I've watched basketball a little bit, but I'm, I'm super into cricket and like, uh, I'll, I'll just, my, basically my YouTube recommendation history is 80% like old cricket videos. And that's, that's how it is. So, uh, so I'm a big sports guy, but just American sports, not so much. Okay. Got it. I'm not into any sports whatsoever, but I do remember when I worked with a, with Tata Consulting a lot of the Indian workers or coworkers, they told me that I looked like a, a cricket player. You look like you get... a lot of cricket players. That's what you look <laughs> like. That's a very generic cricket player face you got there. <laughs> Thank you. I have, my, I have my doppelganger list of every person that people have yeah. said that I've looked like, because especially when I lived in New York, people would stop me on the street. And I, they wouldn't even say that I looked like famous people. They'd just be like, yo, Todd from Seton Prep. How's it doing? How you doing, buddy? I'm like, no, my you name's Stefan. You want to get Stephen. some coffee? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 you want to get like, some really? coffee? And I'm like, no, 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 I'm Stefan. Like, no, you're not. You're Todd. You're coming over. Yeah. We're going to slay some puss, and then we're going to oh, go get man. drunk. And I was like, oh, all right, fine. Um, I'm Todd. So yeah. after living that life, I wrote down because people would say, oh, you look like this person from TV. You look like this athlete or whatever, but just like yeah, yeah. slightly shittier. So no, nah, I mean, um, yeah, like I, the whole doppelganger thing. I don't know, man. Yeah, there's so many people. People are going to look alike. Okay, take it easy with the with like people just uh, it became like a big thing uh, after how I met your mother did like a whole episode around it. And doppelgangers became a big thing. I'm like, okay, dude, it was fun for like a minute. After yeah. that, it's a little much. Yeah, I don't want to hear for the 14th time that I look like Napoleon Dynamite. So I think we can. <laughs> and nobody's saying that. that to you. No, <laughs> oh, that to you. In high school, and my oh god, dude, my my little brother, he looked like Napoleon Dynamite very much, and he also acted like him. So sometimes he'd have the, hey, can I have some of your tots? <laughs> and sounded he dressed up like him for halloween had the curly hair so it was okay. very then uncanny. you're willfully trying to trying to look like that but i i get it yeah yeah but the other 364 days he wasn't and he still <laughs> got it so <laughs> but that's enough about my brother fuck my brother he's not on as a guest yeah you are on him. a brother i don't even yeah. know him but fuck him fuck because you I'm, napoleon I'm you. yeah, yeah I'm, right. I'm team stefan yeah team steph well 
Abrar, I wanted to ask also where it seems like you're very ambitious. You're a very successful person already. I mean, besides the going bald, inevitably. Yeah, exactly. What, what do you have for plans in the future with comedy, with podcasting? What do you, where do you, this is turning into a real interview. Where do you see yourself in three years? What's the three year plan for you? Like a real job interview. Uh, So what I've been, uh, so it, uh, it kind of ties into what I was speaking about, trying to like stay in the moment and, and you know, look at the process, believe in the process and, and enjoy the process. So I'm, excuse me, the like is like you. really, yeah, really uh, working my intestines right there. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just trying to enjoy the process. And before I want to say, you know, six months ago, actually before the pandemic, I had this this thing about oh, all these grandiose plans. I need to buy by end of 2020. I need to be uh, uh, you know hosting weekends at major clubs. End of 2023, I should be fucking this and that. And like I had all these plans, but it's a little bit of introspection, not too much, has kind of like led me to believe that that's not a healthy way to go about things. So I'd rather do one thing at a time, have a rough, you know, like a silhouette of a plan uh, of what I want to do, what direction I want to go in. Uh, but, but stick to, you know, the, the immediate, I want to you know, do as many shows as I can. I want to network as much as I can and talk to different people, reach out to different people. I'm, I'm, I'm not too good at networking and reaching out to people and doing like these quote unquote cold calls or cold sliding into people's DMs. It's a little low key creepy. So I don't do that. Uh, and uh, most of the shows that I get, like, you know, people reach out to me, like 90% of them, they, they've seen me at an open mic, they like it, they reach out to me. But that's they a applaud you way. after your first joke. They're like, <laughs> oh my God, sliding into your DMs already. Yeah, God. exactly. Here's, here's everything on a platter. Don't work for anything abroad. Just here's everything. That's what they give me. I think you might be Jesus, like the comedic no. Jesus. There's... No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm kidding, of course. That was like the first thing. And like I said, like after the first applause break, reality hit real fast in the, in the next two, three, uh, two, three months, I want to say. And then you had to, I had to build everything back up and, and, and build my confidence even on stage back up. So, so roughly kind of speaking, I do want to start you know, getting, doing more shows at the major clubs. I do want to start you know, networking with some of the bigger names that are touring around start hosting for them, you know, possibly featuring for them, depending on which club it is, if it's an A club or a B club. And, and also that's like, that's m- more on the immediate term, but a little further out than that, try to get what's, on the road. What's the difference? What's an A, cu- a club and a B club? Yeah, I mean, without naming names, obviously, but an A Please club do. would- Please do. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> an A club would be where like the you know, top of the food chain uh, comedians would- you know, would do their rounds. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. A B gotcha, club gotcha, you'd gotcha. be, it's still a popular guy, but he, you know, they, they'd be featuring for somebody who's, who uh, maybe headlines an A club or headlines a, uh, a theater, but they're, they're a headliner for a B club. The C Got and D, the, the numbers go down like in a Z, then you have to like get into uh, more indexing with Z1 and Z2. But uh, I, I, yeah, I, I was going to say, C. it's not like bra sizes. It doesn't get better as it goes down. It's, Double D club is not good. It's A club first, then B club. Okay, yep, we're getting there. Yep, yep. So, so that, that kind of a thing. And obviously the stage I am at, I'll take any, any stage time that I get. Uh, so that's, that's one part of it with stand up. The other part, which I'm like, I've been sleeping on also is, is building an online presence, having online content. Mm. And uh, uh, I think he's a mutual friend, Zach Lyman. Uh, he's, he's super into yes. marketing. Uh, he, he was on the podcast, my podcast, and we spoke about digital marketing uh, for digital content digital marketing overall and you're you're in the game too you're also in digital marketing so I'm, i won't be like preaching to the expert here but what he said is be ready you should have like it takes one video you know that can you know go viral so to say and a lot of people have that video now they look at that video they you know a certain percentage of them would be intrigued to make that one extra click to see what your entire page is about if you don't have more content for them then it's a dead end. They're not going like, it's a dead end. So you want to like build up your online library of content, even if not a lot of people are looking at it, but still have something there because when people do want to look at it, it's there you know, build up some sort of an inventory of content. So that's, yeah. that, that's the second thing that I do want to do online presence wise 
I mean, yeah, and that goes true. That's true for both stand up and and podcast. And I just uploaded my first stand up clip of doing some crowd work from a show last week. It took me half a day to edit it because I'm a dumb dumb, and I was just trying to figure it out. But uh, that that thing's up right now. So I'm gonna like start uploading more stand up content, more podcasting content for the podcast. Hopefully, transition into uh, into video podcasting. So a lot of grand plans, but with uh, with the anchor of enjoy it while you're doing it if i'm presenting while i'm doing it uh, while i'm doing it and uh, it's not saying it's not going to be hard it being hard is one thing uh, and that discomfort is one thing but just resenting the whole thing then it's itself in a self defeating why am i even doing it yeah it is. i mean it's a lot of time you have a full time job you're doing podcasting you're doing the comedy the com- I sound like an old man the now. You're doing the comedy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're gonna put that in your little skits. A lot of people say that when they have a you gotta joke idea. Put for your little skits on the Facebook and the Instagram. So it's uh, but and then you've got your wife as well. Yeah. How yeah. are you juggling all of that with the wife? I mean, is she supportive so far? Is she getting frustrated? Are you? Is it better for the marriage because you guys have been so close in quarantine? I mean, yeah. how are you able to? Oh man, that. yeah, that's actually a good question because my wife and I go back really, really you know, go back Since to high school. high school even further, even further back. High school is when we started dating, but we are friends from even before that. So it's yeah. one of those deals. So, so we know each other really well, and and it's easier now with the quarantine because we are at home, so we can spend a little more time together. Also, you know, during the day or whatever, have lunch together, right. things like that. And then I can do shows uh, in the evening and then we spend the weekends together. Now I make it a point. I don't book shows like on certain days and, and on Fridays when, you know, when we hang out. So it's just more of just like communicating and, and managing expectations, even on that level. But she's super cool, man. Like I think it, because she's cool with the whole thing and she, she's like overtly supportive uh, to, you know, she knows that I like doing this and that's a passion of mine. So she's overtly supportive about, Hey, like, you know, you want to do this, you want to do that, uh, and and pushes me even to 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 do more comedy wise. So, in in that sense, that's not a problem. I uh, know we still spend a lot of time together, or try to at least. And it's easier now again, like I said, with the quarantine and working from home, it makes it just logistically easier because you're not driving to the office and back. But before that, it was still good, and it. But I was like going to the to the office. And that's a for like an hour and a half just in drive time, and then hitting mics right after that, going back and forth. You mean? Like, oh, okay, okay. So yeah, so it's still, just not that much. But it's still like you're spending that time, but then you're driving to mics. You know, like I say, I'm mm-hmm. I'm a road comic. I'm on the road from Glendale to to Buckeye to Tempe to Mesa to Gilbert, just like just on the road, like within the Phoenix metropolitan area. You know, so you're Dang. spending a lot of time there too. So uh, a lot of drive time has been cut down with this. So I, I really like the fact that I can work remotely. Uh, but yeah, you just make it work, man. I think there's, there's enough time out there. Um, so you just need to make time for stuff. 24 hours is a lot of time. And I don't think I'm the most productive person in the world at all by, by, you know, by a lot. Like, because I just like fuck off and, and a while away time, like, uh, uh, you know, just piss away time a lot too. So I should yeah. tighten that up, but it, it works out, man. I don't know. It's the cosmic, uh, I don't know, cosmic dice yeah. that just makes everything work. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and maybe divine inter- intervention from Jesus because of all the jokes you're including him in. So maybe that's some yeah. divine intervention. But I also think that the wife, I mean, I, I am also very lucky with the podcasting I'm doing, doing it so much. And go. sometimes I'll have people on as guests that have shows, and then I'll go and see the shows to be supportive. And my wife is there a hundred percent. She's very supportive of me. So, I mean, if you're a guy in comedy or you want to do comedy or you haven't even thought about it and you want to get married to somebody, those are some questions you should ask. Maybe like, Hey, will you still love me if I lose all my hair or Hey, will you still, will you support me if I go into a quarter life crisis and start wanting to do comedy or something? And then, you know, that opens up. So you either ask those questions. So you either ask those questions or just get lucky. And find right. somebody who like works with you on those. That's what happened to me. I never asked those questions. Ne- neither no. did I. Or you get divorced because your wife can't stand you anymore. Bro, so. like, I, I know like you're joking, but there's so many people just in the comedy scene. And I haven't even been around for so long that like, yeah, things don't work out. Like people with, with 
relationships and kids also like comedy basically breaks marriage as they say like laughter is the best medicine i think laughter is the best divorce attorney like it just makes it happen uh, and i have seen that on at least multiple occasions so so yeah i'm definitely lucky like that and and we support each other i support what she's doing she support what i'm doing and and it works out and for a more fulfilled life you need to have things that you're passionate about and and not just i think and this goes back to the quarter life crisis but i i strongly i still believe you know whatever it may it may be something very trivial and and comedy doing open mic comedy certainly is trivial in the large scheme of things uh, large scheme of things but i think you should have something yeah, it, it you helps you and a creative outlet yeah and and in fact i'm trying to work with my wife to get her something because we've been talking a little bit about it where i've found and the way that i found it i was at my 9 to 5 i was working in manhattan and i was like i this can't be it i've got to do something else trying to find a passion and i ended up going online and doing a personality test and then to figure out what personality i was because the horoscopes weren't working man i know i'm a cancer and i know i'm cantankerous no i'm kidding i don't believe in that stuff but um they were the shot uh <laughs> but in retrograde yeah yeah shit i mean that's the I don't know what it means but it doesn't sound good. It sounds like 2020 is in retrograde with mercury or something. But yeah. I ended up doing a personality test and I figured out what personality I was. Like E I don't even remember what it was. ETF LF49. And then I looked at careers for that personality type. And then I found actor, entertainer, teacher and I was like that doesn't pay enough. And then I really? I looked at actor, I thought that would be interesting and then I found voice actor. So I was like, why don't I just try that? It's something cheap that I can get into. I just need a mic before I did all the research on how expensive mics can be. And then I went to a studio and I trained in the arts of voice acting. So Really? I'm also on I worked at Barnes and Noble corporate and I ended up being the voice of the bumper on the first episodes of the podcast. So What? that's kind of how I got into podcasting too. Really, you you're not even joking right now because you're you're one of those guys who like say something like in a deadpan serious and and then you follow it up and no, I'm just kidding. So that that's <laughs> your humor. I know that I I dig it, but like I want to make sure that like you know halfway through you're not like bullshitting. So that's how you got into it. You got into voice acting, which is which is a big thing. Like if you I think did. about it, there's so many places where there's people narrating stuff. You know, people doing voiceovers. from the real local like you know small ads that you see on tv to like the, the big stuff that's you know documentaries and and i don't know you probably got like tons and tons of like instructional videos and educational videos there's so much work to be uh, to be had so you did voice acting how do you like that i i did a little bit of it it's good i wish i did more of it especially now cuz all you need is a microphone and a voice so there are all sorts of just like you said you and i trained in commercial So I did commercial voiceover acting. I have my demo reel. I'll I'll have you listen to it sometime because it's very hilarious. <laughs> We should play it now. Oh <laughs> god, I, I if I have it. But okay. I was going to say or I do have it, but I'll have to dig it up. But mm -hmm. it um that you can do infomercials or like educational stuff. You can do character and cartoon stuff. You can do audiobooks. all sort there's so yeah, exactly. much stuff there's so much like and and audio is big now again audio is back almost it was not so much back like we were like with the books on tape and like that was not like that, that was not sexy books on tape was like old guy driving his like you know 1950 Chevy pickup like that's who like listen to like the the or books on tape but now audio books audible that's cool like it's it's back and i think and again with the time people really want to hold on to their time so if they can get you know two things done at the same time and that's why same reason podcasts are are more and more popular so that's interesting man that's uh, then i i like uh, i i when i was researching about a lot of sound stuff and like production stuff for for the podcast and i mean i don't have a very big production thing going on here i would do audio only so i ran into a lot of content made by voice actors for voice actors in terms of you know settings and and you know eq and and normalizing some of that technical audio uh, you know jargon it's 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 interesting i'll just say that i was listening to an audio book uh, you know last month uh, and it's like an old like fyodor dostoevsky book uh, crime and punishment very very dense mm -hmm. book and like 
I got into it because I saw somebody like suggest it on, on YouTube and I was like, man, this seems interesting. And I got into the book with like 25, 30 hours of audio book or something like that. Right. So over a period of a month, I, I, I listened to the whole thing. The guy on that, the voice actor, he was not just a guy narrating it. He was a fucking actor, bro. That's what it was. Like yes. he was an actor. Like he played out each character and there was depth and all of that because it's such a complex book with so many complex you know, characters and motivations and all of that. If you have just somebody reading it, like they're reading a recipe, you know, for, for uh, chili, yeah. like you, that's not going to work. You need an actual actor. So that's the next level to that too. So it's, that, it's, that it's is, a lot of avenues. Yeah, no, that is a good point. And it's, it's really interesting. God, I feel like they probably get paid pretty well for audiobook stuff. But. <laughs> no, I feel they're yeah. exploited. That's what I feel like. Yeah, I mean, no, I, first I thought. Uh, you know, the same way. It's like, how many characters are going to be in a fucking book? Probably, if it's a dense book like that, there could be 20, 30, whatever. And they're like, and then Darla said, well, I didn't see you say that. And <laughs> doing different accents and stuff, getting into character. It's got to be. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. It's gotta be yeah, like, dude, like just doing introductions for the podcast. Like sometimes then it'll just go one take, boom, done. Sometimes it's like, ah, I didn't like that. Delete, delete, delete. And you have to redo and you're just speaking as yourself. You're acting as yourself. And you couldn't like, I couldn't even do that. Like easily. This is this guy. And there's literally 25, 30 characters is playing out and, and he's crying and he's laughing and he's, oh man, like that's definitely respectable stuff. That's all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. On the intros of the podcast too, I struggle with those as well because I started putting them in around episode 150 or something like that. And what I've done now is I'll just, I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to do one take and then I'm just going to keep going. If I can't think of anything to say, I'll be silent until I can think of something. And then I keep going and then I stop. If I think I hate it, I, I walk away, listen to it over again. And sometimes I'm like, oh, that was actually pretty good. Yeah. And it's so interesting, your state of mind is as you're doing something, you're thinking, God, like, this is the first thing that people are listening to. This could be their first time. And if they're like, Stefan sounds like a douche, a <laughs> long haired, golden lock douche, then I'm not going to listen. It doesn't matter if, who the fuck you have as a guest. They're like, yeah. no, I'm done. So yeah. And especially it, the case is stronger. I think people will skip if it's Mars Jabrani. People will like, no, it's it's okay. They will like skip a couple of beats and get get to Mars Jabrani. Uh, but yeah. if it's this fucking face, right? This is like I'm gonna have Mars Jabrani's hairline pretty soon. Like if that's me, they're not gonna care about this. <laughs> so yeah, it is important, man. Like a lot of stuff. It's 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 a it's a whole it's a pretty big project. I'd say like just having a podcast. It's one thing, but like growing it, being consistent. And I've been doing it for three months. <laughs> Stefan's been doing it for 15 years, self-admittedly, like you told me the other day, you're doing it for 15 years. You're the That's father. right. Dude, I mean, my, grand, my father gave me my grandfather's microphone. And he said <laughs> he gave it to him and he trusted him to podcast. So now I have old Gramps' microphone. Yeah, and, and you I'm know, gonna finally enough, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, go no, ahead, go ahead. That, that sure uh, microphone, that they probably make they have been making that for a good 60 70 years already so you can buy like a 70 year old so that could actually be true if your gramps was like a, a radio announcer or something he could have had the radio host whatever he could have had the same uh, mic oh that's true yeah okay. fuck I, I wonder if this if this is durable enough for me to give to my son and I wonder if he could carry on the legacy, a comedy advice podcast. <laughs> once I pass over into the eternal realm, we'll have uh, Steffi J, Steph Jr. And he's going to be the next host of a comedy. Uh, you're going to do the junior thing? I don't know. Maybe I'll make him, maybe I'll hindify him. What was it? Yeah, Svet Svetlana? Sitaram Santoshi. Dude, Sitaram Santoshi. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Santoshi. Like, this is like a... Dude, you'd be uh, you'd be surprised how how much of a connection uh, India and Italy has. Like an an Italian national almost became the prime minister of India in the early two thousands. Almost a lot of people took offense to that, and like that's why that's not, they had to make uh, somebody else that. But she's a pretty popular and important figure in Indian uh, Indian politics. So Italian born and bred, like some like one of the Indian guys who, who's from a political family. 
he uh, he visited Italy, you know, they hooked up and all of that. And now she's wearing a sari and like she's a she's the it's a matriarch of the Indian National Congress. That's the political party. So so there's a connection there. So Holy there may shit. be some Santoshi out there. Anyway. Like, yeah, what are you talking <laughs> about? Oh my god. Well, we'll see. And then we'll see about my my kindred, my kin yeah. taking on Don't my do legacy. The junior. It's a little ridiculous. Do you, have you, do you watch The Sopranos, right? If you're Italian, you should have watched The Sopranos. I, I unfortunately have not seen a single episode. Oh, God damn it, dude. Uh, so, so anyway, like I was going to say something. So there's a character there. He's an older guy. He's like a better old guy. He's, uh, yeah. his, his name is Junior. Everybody just calls him Junior. See, I don't even know what his actual like first name on the show is. But he's something Junior. And he's like the oldest guy on the show. And everybody call him, calls him Uncle June, Uncle Junior. Do you really want to put that up on like up on your child uh, no. to, to be a seventy-year-old junior? I mean, maybe because if they don't, if I don't call him junior, then they're gonna just look at one of the defects of his body and or face and be like, "Oh yeah, that's Johnny the Cooch," or that's like Johnny the Wrinkle Nose or something, and then he's gonna have that for the rest yeah, of his like life. Mike so. two times. Yeah, 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 yeah. twice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So who knows? But nah. anyway, I have to make a kid to start worrying about those things yeah anyway i was gonna i think i had one more question for you but i can't think of it so we're gonna mm-hmm. s- well first let me just say abrar this has been mm-hmm. awesome so far thank you so much for joining me i'm also i love your microphone it almost looks like an apple oh like it's it's, it's a proverbial it's like the 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 apple that the from the garden of eden is it's right here it's sinful it's proverbial oh. you know what it is it's me being a cheap ass i'm i'm really cheap i'm like i'm i'm miserly thrifty whatever you know synonyms who you want to add to that just overthinking everything you buy so you see you like satani you just fucking italian guy like ah fucking buy it forget about it just fucking buy it forget buy about like it a- take take my money forget take about my it money. so you just i'll, like, I'll rob you guys later you know <laughs> I'm in the garbage management business, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just buy like a six hundred dollar show, like a you know, solid fucking Joe Rogan microphone, right? That's what. It, and you've done a lot of episodes, given, right? Okay, no. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll let you. I'll restore. show you in my closet my sixty dollar microphone okay. that I had. Okay, I so started you're out sensible with. too. Yeah, yeah. This so was after, this this was a gift to myself after I got. Oh no! Well, actually, this was a gift. This was an actual gift. I oh, didn't buy this. Gift? Okay, that's the best. Yeah. That's so the anyway, best. but but you were talking shit about me. So continue. <laughs> I want to hear where this <laughs> no, is I'm going. No, I'm not talking shit. About, I was talking shit about your entire race. That's what I was. <laughs> oh, that's right. Much better. Much, <laughs> much better. better. Yeah. Hey no, Siri, no. remind me to fuck up Abra later. You know. <laughs> Let me get Big Tony. Uh, so anyway, but but the Italian race First, is a piece of garbage. That. Right, right. No, no. Say so yeah, no. <laughs> I, I love Italians. I love my Italian brothers and sisters. Italian brothers and sisters. It's too um, late. We're coming for you. We're okay, coming for you. Right. You're marked. Fuck. It's in. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm in Phoenix. Like the, the 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 most Italian thing in Phoenix is like an olive garden. So I'm I'm good. I think here. So I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> That's basically what I would be if I was a restaurant in olive. Yeah, garden you're like an olive am... garden. Yeah, dude. They they haven't yet they haven't yet commoditized Indian food, and that's kind of weird. I I think there's something there. Some business. Mm. I, know, yeah. I think there's some stuff, uh, but I'm losing my train of thought. I was just talking about the mic, right? The thing with the mic is, it's it's just it's a, just a snowball, which was probably the oh okay. Uh, Giannis Papas is a comedian. He had a joke like, if you have a snowball, you probably tried and stopped doing podcasting in 2009. <laughs> that's that's what it means to have a snowball. But that was the cheapest mic I could find. But then I found this like this little number with a with the stand and the pop filter and all of that that makes the sound like you know decent enough so if i'm doing like a solo or doing something online i have this but if i'm doing uh, something in person i have like the dynamic microphones that with the zoom recorder and stuff like that so so yeah i got i got an okay setup on on the cheap nice that's very cool and uh, same when i first started i did it and it reminds me of what i was going to say it wasn't even a question it was i heard you on another episode of a bra talks to people which by the way, I left you a review on Apple Podcasts. Oh, you did? Wow, thank I did. you very much. 
I felt I felt compelled because it was a good and and you know what when somebody produces pieces of, of work as good as that they reserve they deserve a review and so I gave oh you a review God. I hope everybody listening also goes on over listens to a broader talks of people and leaves a review and then leaves a review here because we need reviews to survive people we are like yeah. podcasting cattle and we graze on those stars because they help us traverse those big hills aka the yeah. charts of apple podcasts yeah absolutely this so this is me learning from a master himself and uh, i i knew reviews are i know they're nice to have i didn't know like how important they were and i never like pushed for them i or asked people to do that but i'll definitely like you know make it a part of my routine because i understand like if it's reviewed and like the you know the the ai the machine learning gods somehow pick it up and then you're you're in the mix and you start you know start doing better and better and once somebody finds you and and they like you you you've got the like i mean not got them like in a bad way but like you know it's no no you got them you, you're like done no more joe rogan for you bitch yeah. you're on my yeah, podcast how much now. fucking joe rogan are you gonna listen to is the same 20 people on the show over and over again come on what's something Seriously. like very cheaply produced and uh, and probably has some technical issues and like the sounds not as nice the the people are not as as knowledgeable or or the host is not as as uh, as clear and articulate just listen to that listen to my podcast I, yes, I want the first, when I listen to the podcast, I want the fir first 30 seconds to be the person being like, okay, we lost our last recording, so we're doing it over again. Thank you so much for being here. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear those rookie mistakes because that is like yeah. homemade pasta to me. Yeah, exactly. I don't want Olive Garden like super produced, a lot yeah. of money put into it, and then it's just three hours of breadsticks and pasta. I want, I want somebody making for it it for me yeah. in their own kitchen yeah and you want somebody I... kneading the egg yolks into the flour you know yes and then yes. making the pasta that's what you want and exactly. uh you you want to get the behind the scenes and um you want joe rogan's not gonna re re reply to your comment on youtube you're like a lot of people that's what i find weird it's hilarious like a lot of people joe i think you're doing a good job but can you like change it up a little bit and like they like and like they know him first name basis I'm like, dude, if you want to leave a comment, just leave a comment, but don't like address it. Like, you know, either you're writing it in your diary or you're like sending postage to his, his fucking personal domicile. Dear Joe, <laughs> I have a couple thoughts about the last episode. No, I, I was, yeah, that is pretty interesting, but you know what? Uh, uh, but leave I, it on we, my podcast. I'll fucking yes. respond to those. Do it on yours. Do it. And, and, and ours. Yeah. We will, we will respond. If we ever do a podcast network, I think it'll be called podcast from scratch because that will That's good. That's good. be the, uh, yeah, yeah. It'll be yeah. The, podcast from scratch. Let's try to make some scratch. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's pretty poignant. There we go. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, anyway, what I was going to say was you got a cheap microphone as you started out. I got a cheap microphone as I started out. I heard you on one of your episodes saying that you have to, you're an overthinker and you said it here too. You think a lot about things. I'm the same way. And with this podcast, I just dove into it. I fucking dove into it. And I was like, you know what? I will look for a little bit on a microphone, but I'm just going to get a cheap one and go and see if I like this. And I'm going to not think so much about segments and the structure. I just will copy one off of another podcast and then figure out if I like podcasting and yeah. figure it out as I go. And I ended up doing that best decision of my life besides finding and marrying the love of my life. Yeah. Almost close second. second. Yeah. Close second. But in terms of passion and, and things that I'm doing for myself, one of the best. And I, if I was to give any real advice to any of you guys listening, do it, just fucking do it stop thinking about it. And if you are really interested in doing it, go and do it because you'll either find out you like it or you don't like it, whatever it is that you are thinking of doing. Yeah. And you'll stop wondering because when you wonder you're occupying so much time and you're occupying so much, oh, yeah. many thoughts. And Absolutely. sorry, that wasn't a real sentence. You're occupying no, yeah. your brain with a lot of thoughts that you could use the space for for other pro more productive thoughts that's absolutely what absolutely agreed with that you always want to like you always want to err on the side of action bias like that's yeah. that's basically like you know the, uh, 
how, how to look at it is if you're thinking about, should I do this? Should I not do this? Just run a quick, quick, you know, cost benefit. Okay. So what's, what's the downside here? I do it, you know, I spend a couple of hours or, you know, I, I throw like 60, a hundred bucks on, on this thing and I start it and I don't like it. Yeah. it that's you, that, that, you know, you're way better off doing that than like thinking about it for a month, two months. And, you know, just like, taking up all this mental space and, and you're frustrated. You don't know what like other cascading effects that has, you know, you do sh worse at your job because of that. And you maybe miss a promotion or you get laid off. Like you don't know how things like have a way of, way of manifesting themselves. So you want to be very decisive. Obviously don't be like a fucking, Oh yeah, I'm going to like put everything on, on red on the, on the roulette table and like, you know, just put all your life savings on it because of, Hey, I, action bias not that you still have to think things through to a certain degree but always be biased towards action i'm the worst person to you know advocate for that because i don't do that personally but i've been trying to and thinking consciously about it and people way smarter than me have always like you know said and that's how a lot of these big tech companies work too like facebook and twitter and google it's always action bias build it build it scrappy and if it breaks you know no big shit like let's we can we can fix it or we can change it so that's flipping like the entire management concept of, you know, measure twice, cut once, which really worked well when like a lot of safety was at stake, physical safety with cars and things like that. A lot of the Japanese philosophy of, and, uh, of management is just make sure you like, just want to make sure you get it right the first time. That was a philosophy. So the big tech almost like flipped it on its head. And now you're like built, uh, you know, build fast break often like some something to that effect and then right. you rebuild so i think right. applying right. that to life is, is definitely a good advice and i have a question for you stefan so yeah. comedy advice podcast so is this a podcast about people giving advice about comedy or is it a comical podcast where people give advice to other people in the general sense before i answer that i do want to say the only thing where i still believe firmly that you should do measure twice cut once is circumcision but <laughs> Other, <laughs> if there's not a lot of measuring to do hey you'll get it right the first time you know? <laughs> or, oh dude if it goes into the other dimension maybe it's harder to measure as it gets it's a, it's just it's a it's a normal distribution like it's easier like in the, in the average and as it gets starts getting like smaller and smaller you need to pull out like a, a what do they call it a micrometer a screw gauge one of those that, that's that's right. That's right. Or just, oh God, I just imagine a pair of tweezers just like trying to pull it out. Yeah. If it gets cold, heat yeah, it up. Yeah, these are the, uh, these are the perils of the uh, male genital mutilation industry, people. Things That's need right. to be standardized. That's right. Well, but, but to answer your question, sorry to take <laughs> us off that yeah. trail of thought. But sorry to talk uh, about this... circumcision for a hot minute. No, no, all good. So this podcast, a comedy advice podcast titled as such, the meaning is loose. So I have been having a lot of comedians on just because it seems like they know how to be funny. But I've also had musicians on. I've had... Um, Those boring fucks. Yeah, the, exactly. Like, you know, I can play a song. Can you play it on the podcast? No, you have to talk. And they're like, oh, I, I don't do that. Can I sing? Yeah. I'm like, no, you can't fucking sing. So I the talking part, yeah. they're not... What? I didn't mean any of that about musicians. Oh, I, I just said it. like, okay. Yeah. Fuck you guys. All right, please. Oh, go oh, can you play this? Yeah. 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 Can you say fuck you in the key of C? No, I'm kidding. I, I as a musician am self floating here. So, but comedians, I've just had good luck with having comedians on here and I've gotten a, a role where I've been able to get bigger and bigger comedians on and it's starting to merge where hopefully what I see is I've gotten a lot of comedians that have, on stand-up but they've also i got jade katapreta who's the host of the soup on e tv yeah. and uh, i've gotten maz Jabrani, who is an actor and he's acted in a couple of things and so hoping that i can get to the actor slash entertainer realm so it can be a little yeah. more well-rounded but yeah, of course. so so in that in that case is sometimes when i interview them we do talk about comedy and it turns into a little bit of advice on comedy but it can be, I, the main thing is we answer questions and that's what kind of makes it fun. So what I'm saying is we just wasted an hour talking back and forth. We haven't <laughs> gotten to the, the meaty part. No, but like, there. I do want to say, like, I know we want to move on, but I do want to say about, speak to the name. I think that name is a masterstroke, man. Like just a, 
it's like SEO friendly as all heck, right? Like, um, I don't know if it was by design, maybe it was by design because you're in the biz, but I'm, I can imagine a lot of people looking of, Hey, I need comedy advice. You know, so many people who want to do comedy and they say a comedy advice podcast, and then they find you and then they see these actual big name comedians on there, which you've gotten to through a lot of work and time. Uh, and they see that and you're, you're instantly in my head. I see your podcast. I see Bobby Kelly on there. I'm like, okay, yeah, he's doing a, a podcast mm. about comedy advice and what to write, how to write jokes and all of that. And then you go in and you get a little more than, more than that. So that's awesome too. So did you actually like think about it in one way or the other when you, when you started out or you just thought, Hey, this would be a fun thing. I think you're going to have to invite me on your podcast to get these answers. These are oh secrets. Oh my God. So I no, started out with a few fake secrets. Now you have fake secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. I mean, I would love to be on your podcast. So I of am course, inviting yeah. myself on there. But to answer your question, I did think of it purposefully to have comedy podcast in there and then comedy advice because I was having comedians. I thought maybe it'll be advice for people that are trying to be comedians. And I do, I mean, for my audience and when I do ads, I look for people that are in the profession of stand-up comedy because it seems like my audience, it's not, it, it is a little bit of new comedians, but then it's also comedians as these conversations get a little more technical and we talk about different terms and experiences and things like that. It's for beginners, but also for intermediate to advanced comics that know these people, know the comedy world inside and out and try to, understand a little bit behind the scenes of the different specials that they've had or yeah. um, different works that they've done. So for sure. it's, it's been, thank you is what I'm trying to say. I appreciate you lauding my thought to try and make it more SEO friendly because yeah. the name before it was hyperbroly and that was because it was me and my brothers and we tried to That's do a you? pun. Yeah. Really? Oh Jesus. I, I just, I've seen that name like, like floating around and I didn't even know it was you. Wait, I just started with a different podcast. Yeah, I've seen that name thrown around every now and then, like oh. on the on the social medias. Oh shit! I thought I changed everything. It should no, be. not not from you. When some somebody else is referencing it, and and I've I'm seen it. I've seen it uh, at least on a few different occasions, two or three times. And yeah. I always thought it's just a different, unrelated podcast. So that's uh, that's good to know. This is an inside scoop. On uh, this is the deep cut subversion of uh, a comedy advice podcast. Oh, hell yeah. You won't hear this on Joe Rogan, fuckers. <laughs> I'm super, I'm sorry. I'm super mean to my listeners. We just have this weird relationship. And I'm, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry that you have to see that. But, uh, but. No, no, it's fine. It's, uh, I've, I've uh, grown up in a household where the mo uh, mom and dad always had fights. So I, I kind of, I, I've learned to look the other way. So you're the proverbial mom and dad. I don't know who needs to be the mom, the audience are you, but I'm looking the other way. Oh, good. So you get it. That's good. That's, that's great. Perfect. I'm glad we're on brand here. So anyway, Abrar, thank you so much for the interview portion and the talkie part. Now, the technical term, the talkie part. But yeah. now we're going to get into the advice and we're going to give some advice. Before we get into the questions, I like to start us off, inspire us with a really juicy inspirational quote. But before I get started on that. I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes. So I know that you already, you snuck one in there, you little sneaker. <laughs> but do you have any others that you'd like to pluck from your inspiration hen? Or mm. are you going to do a pass? Because you already did one. That's fine. I forgot yeah, what it I mean, was. It was you already had, you already have what you already don't have what you want. No, you already have everything you don't actually want. You already did you fuck it up on purpose? Yeah, I did, but I didn't remember what it actually was. <laughs> I mean, right. I think that's, that's a good one. That's definitely a, a good one. And uh, I don't know if this is a quote, but again, like the whole thing about the, the power of now, like everything that you're going to ever do in your life is happening right now. There's nothing in the future. When you're in the future, that is happening now in the future. So that's sort of a thing. So you got to like really cherish the now sort of thing. Yes, exactly. not that much of a quote. It's a it's a loose, loose riff on the concept of time, but 
you get the idea. Let's see what the AI robot has to come up with, huh? I dropped oh. this knowledge bomb right now. This is oh. like a duel now between human versus robot. I know. I'm getting some of the quotes are getting pretty scary. So I think Inspirebot is going to rise up and go against humankind. But for the meantime, he's inspiring. So or she or it, whatever it is. But Inspirebot, for all of you guys that don't know, is a robot. And what it does is it uses AI to take some of the most wisest words known to man and just mash them all together for an inspirational quote. So, Abrar. Abrar. It's Abrar. just getting worse and worse how you say my name as the podcast progresses. The conversation is oh. getting really nice. But now you're just making... God. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Abrar. Can I call you Abby? Abby? Uh, a- I- I'd ra- much rather prefer AB instead of Abby, like, you know, just the style for okay. which AB, yeah. AB, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a I feel like calling cricketer. you Blackbeard because the Black pirate part of Yar and then. Jesus. No, okay, you it, don't it, like it, that. It, it sounds like a Native American name almost. Different type of Indian, <laughs> Stefan. Different type of Indian. I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you heard of, I, I don't know, well, no, I've heard of Redbeard the pirate, but. I thought there was a black beard as well, the pirate. I'm sure there was. All right. Well, we're going to trash it anyway because you didn't like it. So, A.B., nah. we're getting on to this quote. This quote from Inspirebot says, <laughs> Chase what is popular in social media, not what is complicated. Be more like someone you were responsible for helping. What? Hmm. That's, hmm. Be more, Do you want me to read what? it again? Yeah, the, the last part, please. All right. <clears throat> I'll do it as Inspirebot too. Yeah. Just getting into the audiobook. You thing. know, I have a suspicion before you say, you repeat or like we say the thing. I have a suspicion it's just you writing these things and there's no Inspirebot. <laughs> <laughs> just coming up with these really, I, really incoherent bad thing. This is your take of a robot. You're like you're acting like a robot. I'm gonna show. Can you see my screen? Oh, yeah, it's I the can. wrong screen. But I can see I'm gonna, the screen. I'm gonna I, share. I saw midget pawn. Oh, I, well, that, that you can see. That's for us to show later. That's another segment. But can you see this screen right here with the browser? Yeah, I can. Okay. Inspirebot. You just go here, inspirebot.me. Yeah. Generate. Bam. Yeah, I was not actually doubting you, but yeah, this is good to see. They have like a very, very sensual image of, of a woman in the back, very shapely woman, yes. which I don't mind looking at right now. <laughs> <laughs> See, Inspirebot knows your desires. That's what, it's scary. It's, but anyway, yeah. chase what is popular in social media, not what is complicated. Be more like someone you are responsible for helping. What? So see, the first part makes sense. The first part is actually good advice. It's not a saying as much, it's not deep. I mean, it's just saying like, follow the trends, like whatever hashtags trending. I don't know if it's a good long-term advice, but uh, the second part is almost like, so you're helping somebody and, and you want to be more like them, like need somebody else's help. It's a little bit of a circular logic. I don't get it, bro. You got like, no. uh, fill me in on what, what the fuck this robot has been smoking. This is what I'm thinking. I'm with you on the chase what is popular in social media, not what is complicated. So whatever's trending, hop on that. Like, for example, with TikTok that, oh, no, oh, no, yeah. oh, no, the, no, 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 no. Do something like that. Yeah. Uh, Not a, the, I the mean, guy don't... with the cranberry juice and then do that and then. That's right. Yeah, cranberry guy. He's no, well, he's kind of dead now. He's no, dude, he, he was hanging out with Snoop Dogg and like he had, he also had a cra- bottle of cranberry juice and like somebody had like a very funny meme about this dude's going to have to carry a bottle of cranberry juice with him everywhere until he dies. You know, that's <laughs> the whole thing. You can't do that's anything else. So funny. I also, he, w- I just had Felipe Esparza on and he oh, was on God. Felipe's podcast. He was? Jesus Christ. I got like, can I do like, can I do something more niche like pomegranate juice? And instead of skateboarding, I'm just walking. And then, then it goes viral and I get to be on a podcast with Felipe Esparza just because I drank fucking juice. Here's what you got to do though. You have, I think you might have to get a face tattoo. And then you'll also have to be playing a song that's uncharacteristic right. of how you look. <laughs> so like... <laughs> Britney Spears? Mm. Hit me, Britney baby, Spears. one more time. 
hit me baby one more time with a face tattoo i can get a temporary tattoo i don't want to defile my face and then maybe you have britney get a a fake britney across yeah. the cheek i mean i'll i'll do all all of the above to to get on some famous people's podcast but i'm just getting a a feeling that both the inspire bot and you are kind of uh, you know conspire bot against me and like making me do weird things that uh, are not going to help no 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 it's absolutely going to help okay absolutely but but to the second point yeah second be more part, like someone part. you're responsible for helping i was thinking parents are re- are legally responsible for helping their children therefore maybe inspirebot is trying to say be more like a kid stop worrying about adult responsibilities like work or taxes and start thinking about what's really important hmm. what is popular in social media because if you hit that rich viral vein you won't need to worry about things like your yeah. job or taxes unless the IRS audits you then that might be something you'll have to worry about but then act like a kid and be like i didn't know yeah, and you I can be that- one of those guys who's like it's not in the constitution that's why i don't pay any taxes taxation is theft you could be one of those guys there you go exactly that's also a very childish ideology so it all ties together it's very childish all of that exactly throw a tantrum or um sit be like i'll sit and time out for like 10 minutes and yeah. we'll forget this ever happened. So, I feel like try to be a kid and chase your dreams of being a TikToker. Yeah, chase what's popular, don't be authentic. You know, even if 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 it's uncharacteristic for you, behave like a child. This inspire about uh, it's he's a real uh, you know, real advice giver, huh? Like really uh, trying to turn your life around for the better. Not really, but uh I don't know, man. I don't like Inspirebot for some reason. I'm I'm almost like I have an animosity towards Inspirebot. Constantly, I'm personifying it, anthropomorphizing it, whatever that word is. I'm like just adding all these human attributes to Inspirebot, and I'm like really hating Inspirebot right now. Getting a little worked up myself, but I'm just saying like that. That is all a load of nonsense. I understand. Inspirebot said. I understand. And I'm your getting frustrated. frustrated. I don't know why. I I I get that's the whole point of it, but still, I don't know why. This is very raw. and this is this is an my natural reaction to this. No, 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 it's totally fine. And and Inspirebot and I go way back. So he and I were pals and he yeah. you know, I okay, can so- I can speak Inspirebot a little bit better than yeah. most people. I'm responsible for Inspirebot. So sometimes I act a little bit like him. But he does bring out some animosity in some parts. Yeah. I I think it's just me. It's just more of uh, my issues that I have to work through and and not uh antagonize uh an inanimate object. I I would appreciate that actually. Yeah, if you could leave <laughs> poor little Inspirebot alone. He's just trying to help the world with his quotes. Okay, and... question then yes. about Inspirebot. Like can you like tweak it does it is it always like completely random or can you tweak it a little bit to like get focused um quote Inspirebot is completely independent and requires no help and and refuses help actually you try and tweak it it says no no well it actually just spits out another quote so okay i i i can respect that respect yeah. the game yeah you can hate yeah. the player but respect the game the inspiro game well speaking of inspirod i'm feeling inspirod I hope you are as well. You're feeling angry. So let's just move yeah, on to the question. That's my motivation. Like I don't know, I get motivated with anger. So I think it is uh, this this mixed this portfolio of emotions that I have right now. They're, they're pretty good. I'm I'm, okay, I'm in a per- good spot. Good. So let's capture that anger, harness it, and then we're going to aim it right at this next question. This next question, it's from Reddit and it's found by our fan Daniel. Thank you Daniel. It says, "What should I buy my crush?" I want my crush to notice I'm more than compliments and funny jokes. I know she likes the color blue and is a to-go worker at a restaurant with me. I really just want to buy her a gift that she'll like and maybe want to date me. I know this is super vague, but any help in the comments would be appreciated. So, release your anger. Abra. No, no, no. This is a nice nice little guy. Looks like a 15-year-old. Like at least how you enacted it, the voice acting kicked in, and now I'm thinking of a 15, 16 year old kid trying to buy something for his crush. 
Dude, God, I hope so. If it's a 45 year old dude that's working at a to go restaurant and he's like, I got a crush, boys. What am I going to do? What's the gift? What should I get her? So, let's and she's. Pre- okay, I, I shouldn't. I was going to say something, but I think I'd rather. I shouldn't rather. <laughs> <laughs> Please, you know what? At the very least, I'll just cut it out or I'll tell you yeah. that I'll cut no, it out. No, I was just saying it's a 45 year old guy um, who works in waste management. <laughs> and, and the girl actually is still 16. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> That'd be the creepiest timeline <laughs> of this question. Oh, God. So shitting on the Italians yet again. Abroad. Okay. I didn't say Italian at any point in time. You dude. said it's waste stupid. management. You know that's our gig. That's us. <laughs> we are waste management pros, okay? Over here at Satani, it's Satani. Yeah. So whatever, okay. I'll let it slide this time. So anyway, have you, I mean, you've had one true flame your wife did you ever at any point did you have the crush on her first or did she start crushing on you yeah it was a mutual crush i want to say uh for sure uh because we like it was very organic in that sense and that's why it's like really strong um because it was organic so i I got jesus it's really strong it's It's tremendously strong tremendous most beautiful (laughs) most beautiful indian trump look at that indian way way stronger than china way stronger china he's he's china i don't know why he like drags it up china china yeah that's what i was saying man like i think we should just let trump be like the the fake president like the front for the world everybody then would be like you know scared of america that oh america's like oh they're on the edge these guys are crazy but then you have like a real guy actually running it in the back it's like you know uh, a kid uh, they they get uh, to steer the wheel on like a boat uh, on a ship you know on like yeah. a cruise ship they have a little play play uh, st- steering wheel you give to a kid you should do that to trump right and then he's just like running around saying china <laughs> and then uh, then there's somebody Hilarious. actually running it in the back that's a pretty good idea. And then, you know what? You could take him on the road. We could do like comedy. He could be the feature and then Biden's the headliner. <laughs> yeah, and so that way he I just gets Kamala the Kamala was the feature. Oh, she, she's the host. Maybe. <laughs> oh God. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> but Trump's anyway. like the local act. I don't know. Yeah. He gets some. Yes. He's the local. He's the host. Camel is okay. the feature. And then. And then Biden is the the headline. This has been the comedy advice podcast. Everybody, you know, uh, that's 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 good advice for the country. How about that? Let's go back to Daniel. Let's see. Thank, oh, Daniel's the you. one who sent it in. Thank you. Appreciate it. So, Dan, yes, Daniel's the one who sent it in. I don't know who wrote this, but you've got a crush. What did you get for your girlfriend now wife when you had a crush on her? Did you get her oh, anything, man. or did you yeah, just probably. give her the charm? Oh man, yeah, not not a lot of charm to give away. So I was rationing on that. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, I I give her a lot of stuff, but I want to talk about what this young man should be uh, okay. should be giving okay. his uh, his crush. Sixteen year olds likes the color blue, but yeah, you know what? First piece of advice, kid, uh, be a little more perceptive. You know, you're looking at things. You know, observe a little more, and and come out with a little more information than the color blue. I'll just say that. It'll help you in life in the long run. Okay, the color blue is is just a color. So maybe she's like, ah, she likes music or something. Like, you know, you'd have something to go with. But uh, this kid's going to have a hard time if he doesn't change his ways uh, and and not be so like, you know, just, ah, she likes blue. She likes blue. I don't know, man. You can get her like a sweater, I guess. I don't know where they live. If they're here in Arizona, you probably don't need much of that. But you get a nice little blue sweater. That's a that's a very uh, I want to say it's a very plain, very uh, what what's the word I'm looking for? Non I'm looking for a word for a word Basic. for non sexual. What's what's oh, the word? Oh, uh, platonic. Platonic. That's the word I was looking for. A very platonic gift. You give them a set of sweater. Don't give them one of those like slutty, like Halloween sweaters, like which are like you know two sizes too small. Just the appropriate size. A nice blue sweater. And and try to mix it in with some other occasion. You know, you don't want to be like the weird guy you know, who's drooling, foaming at the mouth, like handing somebody a sweater who like don't you know, doesn't even know you. So find a different occasion, maybe a birthday, maybe you know a Valentine's Day, something. Just find something, and and use the the cultural occasion of that day as the delivery mechanism for your gift. Which I I think you can lock the answer of a blue sweater. 
Mm, got it. Got it. I love that. I really like, cause blue sweater's practical. She's a to go worker. So she's going, she's on the go. So she might yeah. be outside sometimes. And, uh, it's, it's pretty useful and it's, it's platonic. Yeah. Bro. Hey, you don't want to like show up with a big blue dildo. I'm just saying like, I don't know what these guys ages, like assuming they're 18 plus. Yeah. You don't want to show up with that. Is all I'm yeah. Saying. Exactly. I mean, even if it's blue, I don't think it's going to get you very yeah, far. I think like the color, she'll like it to a certain degree. But like after that, I think the, the, the dildo uh, fact of, of the gift is going to take over the blue real quick. <laughs> that, that takes the platonic right out of it. So yeah. yes, dildo, unless, oh no, I was going to say a jacket on the dildo. So it looks really cute. Oh, like but you use the dildo as a coat hanger? <laughs> oh know, yeah, there you the go. That, yes. It's oh my foot. God. That would be pretty, I might get that for my wife, but just, no, no, but like fucking, does she like blue? She loves blue. Okay. She loves blue. Because She's a to-go worker. Good, we know that's okay. But uh, just that, talking about if she likes the color. <laughs> she now, now here's one thing I want to ask, bro. Are you willing, if you're a to-go worker, you, I don't know how much money you have saved up and I want you to be able to use your money how you want it. And if you're going to try and get a gift for a girl that is not even going to go out with you ah. yet, maybe you okay. should use those beautiful words that are free and ask her out. Mm. Just be like, look, girl, girl. I don't know how you want to say it. Charm it up. Do it how you want to practice it. In the mirror. Yeah. Don't be say like, girl. Don't open with girl. That's, yeah, uh, that's a good way to charm it up. <laughs> girl. Hey girl. So no, be like, ma'am. Or whatever her name is. Call her by her name. Hey, That's why hey, it's given Cindy. to her. Yeah. Hey, Cindy. I like you. Would you like to go out on a date sometime with me? No, no, no. Coffee. Yeah. Do coffee. That yeah. way, it's not the intention of... I feel like coffee is yeah. the, the playground of where friend and girlfriend are. And so you can either... You play together and then it could turn into just friends you could maybe sneak a little caffeine kiss mm. afterwards nice, so, nice coffee breath kiss nothing nothing speaks <laughs> mm, a, a cold brew smooch <laughs> nothing better a, ca oh, man, man. a cappuccino <laughs> kiss god so bring breath mints too speaking yeah. of or don't get a coffee get a chai chai lattes are delicious and they leave your breath yeah not isn't disgusting. what i love about that uh stefan you calling it chai and you didn't say chai tea so you, you've, you've probably uh, encountered that before with the chai tea is redundant. But yeah, get a chai latte. That's also going to stay in your mouth. See, I see I'm, I'm going into the disgusting imagery. You're trying to make it nice. I think it's a good balance here. But you're right. You're, I can concede that, you know, uh, before you buy her stuff, before you go to the gap and start dropping at least $30, $40 on, uh, on a sweater made by Bangladeshi kids, you may want to, like, you know, take it a little easy, you know. Uh, Go, Think of the go kids. get a coffee. Maybe it could, you could go to like a restaurant that is blue themed, you know, maybe Dutch Brothers is very blue. So it's like kind of incorporate the blue right there. I uh -huh. love that. You could, maybe you could take her to Sonic where you could get an artificially blue flavored slushie. Yeah. It's a creepy like, blue with Sonic. It's a little more creepy with this uh, Sonic very... blue. But yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, this is good. Yeah, this, this that's is good. how I get when I, we receive a good advice. Yeah. This is good. High pitch. All right. So I've got a new segment, Abraham, and this is positive spin. So I'm testing this one out. If it sucks, I'll take your feedback, whatever. Um, so this is where I feel like the world, we just instantly go to negative thoughts. And so yeah. what that does is it trains our mind to just think of negatives when bad things happen. And we need to start thinking more positively because when you think positive, it gets you on the right track to action oriented to get to solve yeah. the problem. Yeah. Makes okay. sense. Yeah. So, so it's a U turn. You got to turn the ship around. That's, that's what you're trying to do. So let's see. So, but that's very right. piratey of you. Yeah. <laughs> the pirates don't turn their ships around, they go and they pillage. <laughs> <laughs> pirates go full steam ahead it doesn't matter yeah. if there's a lighthouse right in front but 
Uh, I'm so sorry to the pirate community that's listening to this. I love yeah, you guys. The Somali, the only pirate community that's still active is Somali pirate. pirate. So I think they're fine. They're not listening to this podcast. <laughs> that's true. And and cyber pirates that are pirating music. So yeah, this is free. So there's no need. So you're right. Anyway, positive <laughs> spin for you. This a bad thing happened. Abrar, you are doing comedy. You're crushing it. You're still crushing it, but all of a sudden, you cannot think of a single joke that doesn't have to do with tacos. So all of your material, you're still writing every day, killer jokes, amazing, but they're all about tacos. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I definitely don't see that as a negative to begin with. I don't even have to give you a spin. Holy crap, if, like that's really gold, man. Like if you have solid jokes about a single topic and that becomes like a 10 minute chunk and, and you work it out, that's, that's not negative at all. That's a big, big, big positive. But now like in this, this is more of a, uh, in, in the hypothetical world, a lot of people do that with would you rather, we need more details, right? So the detail on this is how long does, does this, this uh, being stuck in the taco limbo go on for? I'm so glad you asked because it lasts for the rest of your comedy career until you decide to put down the pen and stop the jokes, you're in taco land, baby. It's just okay. taco so all the I'm time. I'm going to treat it. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to treat it more like a would you rather. So, so end of my com- comedy career. So can I end my first comedy career and start a second one? Nope. There's no, you're not. I know we were talking about you being Jesus, but you're not, you can't resurrect. And, and <laughs> I'm not talking about being like succumbing to my own mortality. I'm just saying like end a comedy <laughs> career and make a comeback. That was very poetic. No, me- metaphorically speaking, you, you're just all taco all the time. Even if you stop and you open the book, the crunchy shell with lettuce and ground meat will be there waiting. Yeah, for I mean, like, if, if that, that is what the, the cosmic gods want, uh, I'll just take that. I'll make a taco special, right? I team up with like a shitty taco place like Taco Bell. If Taco Bell wouldn't have me, I'll like team up with somebody more local like Taco Boy. Or some shit and, <laughs> taco and make a- <laughs> taco whistle yeah, have you, it's, it's not have you been to bell. taco boy it's a pretty good like taco taco boy is a pretty good spot it's that's a real song. thing yeah oh. it's a pathetic <laughs> name but wow. i can be the boy and i can put the boy in taco boy i'm more of a old boy now but, uh... <laughs> but that's- <laughs> so yeah i do i do a taco special right and like because i have unlimited taco material According to you, I can do a really solid, like a motherfucker, like bring the house down taco material. Now I'd be super famous with the Hispanic community. They love tacos. I'd be super f- uh, famous with uh, white chicks who get drunk and go to Taco Bell. Like I'll find my demographics and I'll hit the fucking taco special and one and done, baby. Like I'm doing the one hour and, and taking that sweet taco money and then going back to my hole, whatever that is, then not eating another taco in my life because I know through the promotion of my taco special, I would have eaten a lot of tacos. And that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's all good news. And this has been the positive spin. Shit, dude. You did it. You did it. I was getting worried. I, maybe I didn't make it bad enough. Because I think you could, you would be the taco guy. Like that, that would be you. You'd just be the, a bra or the taco yeah. guy. Yeah. And then you could have, Netflix is going to be like, we love your taco material. Yeah. Do you do anything outside of tacos? Nope. No, that's my all tacos. Yeah. <laughs> and then niche. I could They're... like open up restaurants right after I could be the Indian taco guy and have Indian tacos and that'd be like an enterprise that everybody would love oh my god taco chico masala yeah. that would be amazing oh, no but you're vegan yeah we could do vegan tikka masala vegan tacos add another spin to it chicken taco segment. masala yeah there you go so I mean Maybe, maybe, yeah, you're right. You didn't set it up to be bad enough, but I'm a master of maneuvering these situations. And that's why I saw the upside. And that's the point of the segment. From well, I'm proud of you because that went, Thank you. you did a great job. Thank you nailed you. it. Thank you. All right. We've got the last question and then we're going to say right. goodbye. This is from Reddit. It's by our fan, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. It says, nudes got leaked to the whole school. Mail. Someone stole my <laughs> phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 in parentheses, it's 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Someone stole my phone, which had the nudes, and leaked the one with my face. And I ain't going to lie, I was pretty small in it. But I also <laughs> had photos where I was big as hell, which later posted, but not a lot of people have those. I was big in versus the ones I was small in. Yeah. Some females know I got a big dick, and others don't. What should I do? Okay. So quick um, pre-log on this. Like, why are all these fucking school kids writing into Reddit about these weird issues, man? What's going on with that? This is the downfall of the American civilization. That's what's happening right now. You see that unfold right in front of your eyes. Bro, the barnacles of the internet. Reddit yeah. advice column, <laughs> it seems like. Because what the... Bro, this... I, I don't even know where to start with this. But I mean where he first is like nudes got leaked to whole school and then hit mail and then his description <laughs> his description mail. is oh the nudes got leaked but i don't care about that i just look like i've got a shriveled little peen yeah i want the ladies to know that i got a big old d so yeah, it's like a, it's like a stanza this shrinkage yeah there you it's go like, yeah it's shrinkage so what you need to do it's it seems like you have no Space shame whatsoever right. that there are nudes yeah. Cut and dry. Pretty easy solution right there. You're going for it. Go for it, Stefan. Yeah, just go and leak more nudes yeah. with you with your big old paints. Yeah, I use Photoshop you... if you have to. I mean, at that point, like, you know, you're kind of like the, the, the moral argument, the ethical argument is kind of uh, you know, not on the table right now. So just, just hire a uh, Photoshop guy you can trust, you know, who can do a good bang up job you know hit me up i got a photoshop guy he's a good friend of mine he he'll doctor up some penai <laughs> some <laughs> for you penai. oh i like the scientific word for the plural that's that's amazing <laughs> and you're you're right i mean just photoshop it up then pay that photoshop guy to leak it too so it won't look like it oh, came yeah, from you yeah you like a, you get probably get a discount for the double service Right. There you go. But yeah. But you gotta like keep it realistic. You can't like hype it up too much. But then like when you actually get into an encounter, yeah, over promise, under deliver, that's the worst thing. So on the contrary, so now just that sparked something in my brain here. Maybe, maybe you just let the fucking uh, micro penis pics just float around, right? And let that stay. So that's the expectation. Now develop other skills, right? Somehow get somebody in the sack. That's very disgusting. Again, they say school. That's what weirds me out. Let's just assume they're seniors in school, right? And like, let's just... assume they're 45 years old working in waste management. <laughs> seniors in school, <laughs> seniors in school, 45 years old. Very Italian of you. <laughs> it takes a long time to get through the skull. Okay. okay. Some, uh, so, big heads. so my point being, you know, let that expectation stay there. You know, let that linger and, and everybody knows that then like somehow, you know, get somebody in the sack and then like, assuming you're not like delusional and you, you're a grower, not a shower and like all that kind of stuff. And you do have some goods to deliver, right. And, <laughs> and you can deliver those goods. Then you get like, again, organic marketing and you know, the organic reach is going to be going to like start kicking in and people like, Oh no, that's not true. Somebody saw his, his haters photoshopped it. And, and then you're in the game and then you're like, you know, you're within your ethical limits also, you know, you're not doing false advertising and uh, it's a win-win. That has been the penis segment. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. End of segment. Jesus. I, by the way, I hope the next time you go to funky town with your wife, you say, I've got the goods to deliver, babe. No, so. yeah. I, I mean, it's, there hasn't been a single time I haven't said that. I was hoping that was the case because not that I fantasize about you saying that, but the way you said it just, it, it was amazing. Yeah. You got to say it with conviction. Even if you don't have the goods, you just say it with conviction. Because you know what the big penis really is at the end of the day? It's the confidence. Your big girthy veiny confidence. That's yeah, it's what just really... a metaphorical penis. Yeah, I get it. I yeah. Get it. Exactly. Uh, that helps to we... have an actual physical penis that's really large too. But sometimes, like, I've, where do you cut it off, man? Like, I don't know. Like, this is getting pretty penis heavy this episode, but I don't mind it per se. Not another circumcision joke could be made. At where do you cut it off, too? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's so uh, the point being, like, after a certain point, you're like a freak of nature, right? You don't. You, you don't want like. You don't want something that's slapping your knee. You have to like roll it up like you're, like you're, you know, you're in the fire brigade and you know, just like rolling up like 
fight. <laughs> oh my god, like a like... fireman just trying to roll up that hose on the truck yeah. again. Yeah, you got like you know, like swirl it around like a like a serpent around your thigh. You don't want. Yeah, you don't want to be that. Caw getting stuck on a tree limb after getting thrown by Baloo yeah. in the Jungle yeah. Book. Yeah, you you don't want to be like a you know like one of those things where they. In, in westerns they have a rope that they throw and catch the bad guy you know you don't oh want the to lasso the lasso there you go that's what it's called that's yeah, you don't right. want to have a lasso you don't want to be that slinky in ace ventura pet detective that goes yeah. down the stairs but it's yeah too big. having said that having said that you need something you know to get by you can't have you nothing so so there's a there's a nice nice little balance and i'm sure there's a metaphor for life in there but uh, yeah not too big, not too small, just right. Oh my God. It started out kind of like a Dr. Seuss quote. Not too big, not too small. There's a perfect size for all. Yeah, there you go. It's, uh, that's, that's fine. I will not eat green eggs and ham. I will not eat them, Sam, I am. Yeah, the, what, the green eggs are like, like blue balls, green eggs. Is that like a bad Oh, like a- green eggs. Maybe that's a big metaphor for tiny ween. It's like, I will not eat the green eggs, like the little, the rancid balls, because the guy didn't take a shower, and then ham. Ah, God. Ham's not like, but but, but I get the point. (laughs) Point is well taken. (laughs) Oh, you were making, for those who are just listening to audio, Abrad was making a disgusted face, but it wasn't the fact that it was a metaphor of genitals. It was the fact that, it wasn't an accurate metaphor because the ham didn't line up to the shape of a male genitalia. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See, this this is the difference between a pro and an amateur. He he like he knew where his audiences needed a description of of the ham being a penis, and like he 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 voice acted it like the the guy from Crime and Punishment. So you basically did that. That's right. That's going to be my next venture: Crime and Punishment Two, Extra Crime Punishment. Crime and Penismant. <laughs> <laughs> oh god just the tip of the yeah. iceberg but yeah. about the circumcision joke but yeah anyway tip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes oh but I, this is this might be the longest episode i've ever done oh man i'm i'm extremely sorry <laughs> but it was all a pleasure sometimes oh, big is good and long yeah, is good it is yeah so the, you're definitely the longest i've ever had but it was a, definitely a pleasure i wanted to say thank you for your time and thank you for being an awesome guest yeah absolutely thank you so much for having me on and and talking about all kinds of things including penai which i don't get to talk about much on my podcast which i think people should check out you know the the loyal followers daniel please i gave you an answer probably not a good answer but please check out my podcast see this is the kind of personal attention you get with uh, with uh, the abroad talks to people podcast or a comedy advice podcast so uh, my podcast is available on all streaming platforms. So I'd really appreciate it if people could check it out and you know look into it if you like it. You know, just let me know. I'm uh, on Instagram also at Abroad Talks to People, uh, and uh, and yeah, it'd be it'd be a capital thing to do if you could do that. That'd be awesome. That's amazing. Cap, I love that word too. I also wanted to read my review that I left on your podcast. Let's do it. It am was, I gonna blush? You might. Yeah, you might gush. It is, oh my gosh, I better hurry too because I have, uh, oh, I can't find it. Abrar. This, yes, we are, I'm going to make you wait while I find it. Yeah, I can, I can look it up too. Thank Here we go. Abrar talks to people. All right. I don't get notified of that shit. That's, that's a problem. Like I should. I know. It's, yeah, it's weird. You I'll, ta- like, I'll talk. Keep. Okay. Yeah, Decking. Yeah. yeah. I put for the title, I put wonderful. And then for the description, <laughs> great start. No, no, you said it. Wonderful male. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, the description I put so much better than his other podcast, A Broad Talks to Animals. Oh, oh you did. We actually <laughs> wrote that. That's funny. <laughs> so you should see that that's going funny in. and a slight, yeah, and a slight to the 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 simpleton of a name that I have. But that's funny. <laughs> I couldn't help. No, it's a great. I mean, it gets the point across. It's succinct. It, it's a good name. Oops. 
and we know that you're not talking to animals. So yeah, yeah, it would be a crazy man if you're talking to animals, but not so much. And a anim- lot of animals are are pretty uh, pretty smart. You can communicate to them. But that's yeah, that's true. besides I, the point. Do I do I smell a sequel coming on another oh, podcast? Yeah, I mean, dude, like if if the first one t- uh, turns out to be just about tacos somehow, uh, then I have to <laughs> find a sequel. <laughs> Uh, animals don't give a fuck about tacos you know that's true that's true um well i feel like i could talk with you for hours yeah yeah. but i I don't i don't want to anymore no i'm kidding no but we must end this sometime because our listeners they get impatient and blah blah blah. so i will have all the links to everything you had mentioned in the show notes please people follow about if you can see him it live see him live if you can listen to his podcast, listen to his podcast, leave a review, subscribe, follow him on Insta. Yeah. So I've just put the live shows, uh, you know, take a quick 10 second here. I got a lot of good shows coming up uh, and I don't know when this is going to come out, but I have the, the, big, uh, the, one of the biggest shows I have is at JP's comedy club in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, it's with Jill Kimmel. Uh, Jill Kimmel is a pretty popular, great comedian. She's done uh, shows all around the world and I uh, get the chance to feature for her. So I, at an actual club so i'm really excited for that so that'd be one show and i you know uh, if, if stefan would be uh, benevolent enough i can have him throw a link for that show right uh, right in there and if people want to come out and spend spend a nice evening uh, of comedy on a saturday night uh, maybe daniel the, the the kid with the blue you know the jp's comedy club is blue themed so he can come over uh, he's not listening oh. to this, but yeah, so I'm just trying to tie everything together. So yeah, that's, there's that show that I'd love to see some people come out to, and there's the podcast Abra talks to people. That's beautiful. Yes. I will have a link in the show notes. When, when is the date, by the way? I'm not it's sure when this December is. December 4th. Oh, December 4th. This should come out by then. I'll let you know if it doesn't, but if it doesn't, yeah. you have more other shows. If I'll make sure and mention that. Oh man. Yeah. Well, Abra, it's been a pleasure having you if you want to stay on for a couple minutes after we say goodbye to our audience it's totally Mm -hmm. cool but wanted to say audience thank you guys so much for listening and we'll talk at you next week bye